Hi, I'm Mark Kepler with Purdue University Extension Service. What I want to talk about today is some of the things that have happened with that storm we have in May of 2019, how these different trees in our community have reacted to it, why we have some trees that have uprooted, and also why we have some trees that have, have busted out and fallen apart. So we're going to do that, but what we're going to do first is go out and find ourselves a tree growing in a big area, and we're going to talk about how trees grow and how roots grow. And so we'll go do that right now. So I've come to the parking lot here at Rochester High School to talk to you about how trees grow. And just like I do when I teach fifth grade tree science classes, I've got to instruct you on a few different things on the growth of the tree. Number one, trees have been around here long before the pioneers ever came. This area was a solid forest at one time with great big huge tall trees growing way up into the sky. Hundreds of feet tall potentially with some of these trees that we're looking at. And so in that forest situation, their roots were ones that made the soils. Those roots are the things that made these fertile soils that our farmers came here to plow up and to farm and to feed their families with. And so if you ever climb down into a hole and you take a look, there's about a top, a foot top that is about a foot deep of things that are black. That's the organic matter. That's 10,000 years of dying roots, dying leaves, falling to the ground, rotting away, creating that great stuff called topsoil. So one of the things you're gonna find out right off the bat that most people really don't realize is they think that tree roots go way down deep in the soil. The, the, the point being 95% of the tree roots are in the top foot of the ground. So if you understand that, that a lot of your roots are right here on the surface of the soil, then you'll understand why sometimes we get the uprooting occurring. <clears throat> now the exception to that is a lot of our nut trees, like the oaks and the walnuts, they have a taproot that goes down deep. But that taproot is just there for structural purposes, not all those roots absorbing the nutrients that are in our soils. Uh, that's what we have for our major nutrients that are going into our plant. So, most of the roots are in the top part of the ground, with the exception of some of the nut trees, and those are the ones that don't seem to blow over as easy because they have that taproot down in there. <clears throat> the other part of the thing we talk about with roots is roots need to have air. And so I can take a look over here, and let's, let's zoom out a little bit, and we'll take a look what's over here to my side. And that's the parking lot area. So if I take this tree and I lay it down, that's at least how far the roots of this tree goes. A lot of people think the tree roots end at the drip line where the branches end. That's not true. They go way, way out there. But what tree roots need to have is air. So as those tree roots go out into that parking lot area, <clears throat> there is no air underneath that parking lot. So there are very few roots forming underneath that blacktop. So all the nutrients and all the water that this tree gets for its life comes from out in this grassy area that we have out here. That's the important thing to understand about tree growth is they have very shallow roots and they stop where the blacktop stops and they stop where the air stops. And the depth they go down in the soil is dependent upon how much air is in the soil. So the deeper they go in the soil, the less air that's in that soil and so they quit. And the one tree, and we'll see a demonstration of this, who's really sensitive and don't go very deep, are lots of times are the evergreen trees. So with the weather conditions we had in the month of May, where we had wet, saturated soils, which made easy for pulling things up out of the ground, and let's take a root look at some of these roots and how they go, and what would happen in many situations around town where these trees have uprooted and had damage. So remember, tree roots, shallow, stop with the blacktop. Okay, so I've come back out here to the high school just to demonstrate the difference between a, a deciduous tree with deeper roots and an evergreen tree. Behind me is a blown over um, Norway spruce tree. And if you look at the root ball on this Norway spruce tree, it's a whole lot thinner, not as deep down into the ground. Now this soil underneath me is sand, and even though it's sandy soil, it did not go down very deep into the ground. So remember what I said about the air. The deeper, the more air grows down, the more deeper the roots are. 
Well, in this situation, if this Norway spruce was on a clay saw, it would even have a thinner root ball associated with it. So this root ball ripped up. The ground was saturated, totally wet, and obviously they had some really powerful winds come through here, and it was able to easily uproot this tree. Even though there's a large area for those roots to go into, it could not overcome the strength of that wind. But again, the roots do not go very deep on an evergreen tree at all. So if we see a very wet spring and high winds, this kind of activity is something that can occur in our area. So I have come back to the tree that we started out with and I want to take a really good look at the bottom of this area and see how we've got all this road going out this way. That's where those tree roots on this tree stopped. So there's nothing holding it out on this area whatsoever. And so as we go across the road, our we may have a few roots out there, but not very many at all. And then I come back to this area uh, beside the tree that, that we have here. As you look right underneath the tree and look right down here, here's an area where the tree roots are, uh, were underneath this drive. Well, again, this drive have shut off the amount of air getting to the roots. And so consequently, those roots just pretty well stopped right there. So when that wind came out of the south, this tree headed towards the north, and leaned over and had this same problem. And so that's a really good indicator of why these trees uproot. These trees in town do not get to spread their roots out. They get constricted by the roads, they get constricted by the sidewalks and all the things that people are involved with. And that's why we don't have trees, or why trees have difficulty coming through these storms like we have. Let's take a look at how deep these roots are on this tree. Okay, like I said before, the vast majority of the roots are around the top foot of the ground. So as we look at the root ball of this tree, we see about a foot, a little over a foot and a half maybe, of this compromising the root ball. They are not roots going down deep in the ground, they are roots that are going out shallow. And because we have that shallowness, these trees are not able to hold themselves as well in these windstorms as we would like to have them do that. Now on the other hand, if this was an oak tree, Chances are it would not have uprooted, but it may have broke off during the storm if we had a weak area in that tree. And now let's go find one of those oak trees. Okay, I'm back at the high school again, and I'm standing in front of a big white oak tree that probably was maybe a couple of hundred years old. Um, and this tree, I want to talk to you about how trees grow again. One of the common things that I ask people is, does a tree grow from the outside annual rings or from the inside annual ring. In other words, it's a brand new year this year. Where are we putting down that new annual ring? Are we putting it down in the center of the tree or on the outside part of the tree? And the answer to that is it is on the outside part of the tree. The outside part of the tree is the live part of the tree. The inside is dead. It serves no function whatsoever other than to structurally keep that tree there and not have it blow over in a windstorm. So when a tree becomes hollow, what ends up happening is we lose some of that structure inside. But the tree will look very healthy and you won't see any problems. And this tree was that way. You could not see any problems at all on the outside of this tree. But there was rotting going on on the inside of the tree. And that rotting is what essentially it did is it started to hollow it out. So now we're going to talk tree physics. You thought you got out of that in school, didn't you? But we're going to do a little tree physics. Think of a hollow tree as a hollow pipe. So if you try to bend a hollow pipe, they still have a lot of structure involved with them. But if you put a little bit of a nick on the side of that hollow pipe, and then it's easy to bend that hollow pipe over. So even though this tree behind me, you could not see that nick that we're talking about has already started on the inside. And one of the edges was very, very weak and very thin, and there was a lot of rotting going on. Now this is an oak tree, and it's got a taproot. So it didn't uproot, but it got the weakest place on this tree is what ended up blowing over, and that weakest place was right there where that hollowing and that rotting occurred. We'll take a look at some of this, this area here and just see how rotted this tree was. Couldn't tell it, but it's there. And maybe one of the reasons why it was rotted like this is because we've got all this activity of roads and construction that was here a long time ago, and those activities may have started that rotting going on from the roots on up into the plant. Let's take a look at some of this. So inside of this tree, here's a log laying out of that tree, and you can see that rotted area, and the rest of it looks fairly well. 
but in reality it is not fairly well. If you take a look at this, it's really light, very spongy, breaks apart really easily, and, and so this tree was well rotted in the inside of that. As we get on down further into that tree on the outside, these are the outside rings, the live part of the tree out in here, and those outside rings are really healthy and doing very well. But there was uh, that rotted far enough into those outside rings and when that wind came, it was no longer the solid pipe. It had kind of like a nick in the side of it like we talked about, and that's what ended up taking it out. So it's very hard to say whether a tree is good or not, and it's very hard and difficult to know whether you've got a good tree out here. One of the things they have to do is go around with a hatchet and basically hit it on the back side of the hatchet, knock it, and listen to see if we can hear a hollowness to that tree, and that's exactly what we could do in a lot of our trees in our community. But sometimes we'll see some of that hollowness is way up in the top of the tree, and we don't know that's going on. So just to reflect back on this, lack of area for tree roots to grow, lack of oxygen in the soil, something that may have triggered a rot going on inside the tree, probably came out of the roots and came on. These are all reasons why our trees in town are more susceptible to our winds and our storms that come along. But gee, it, what would this town look like without all of our great beautiful trees that we have around here and all the beauty they give us and the value they give us. So a storm like this is something we end up having to pay for every once in a while. But in the long run, we get a lot of good and a lot of growth out of our trees. This is Mark Kepler, Purdue University Extension Service. Thank you for joining me today.